All right, welcome back to Chem 230 Online. And remember, if you have any questions about any of these videos or any of the other information in the course, feel free to email me and I will address your questions. I know it's going to be really a lot of pressure trying to learn everything online in the short amount of time we have. Hopefully these videos will be a great resource for you to fill out your gap notes and make sure you've got all the content here. And then if you have any questions, we can interact even though we can't do it in the normal way. So here's another example of constitutional isomers. And this is something that in this slide, I just said nine isomers. There are more isomers. We can talk about geometric and optical isomers, which we'll do later. But right now, the only type of isomerism we have is constitutional isomers, where the atoms are connected differently to give us different molecules. A good starting point, if I want to work out the constitutional isomers of heptane, is to understand what heptane is. The ane suffix means it's a saturated hydrocarbon with no interesting functional groups. Hept means seven carbons. So saturated hydrocarbon with seven carbons, it's going to be C7 and then H 2N plus 2. 2 times 7 is 14 plus 2 is 16. So all of the isomers of heptane are going to be C7 H16. And a lot of times I like to verify that with a simple Lewis structure. We put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 carbons in a row. And then we can go ahead and put enough hydrogens on it to saturate. Again, you'll see where the CN H to the 2N plus 2 rule comes from because every carbon gets two hydrogens on it except the end ones get three. So there's our C7H16 and this is heptane which means seven carbons in a row and there's no substituents, there's just hydrogens on it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven carbons in a row, heptane C7H16. Now there's other ways to connect the carbons and thus the hydrogens that'll give us different molecules. And this suggests there are nine isomers. The first one is heptane. Now systematically again, if you watched the last video on hexane, you may have noticed that my strategy is to start with the longest chain and then you shorten the chain and put the carbons you took off on the side as branches. So if we do that, the next logical one would be one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in a row. And then we throw one carbon off to the side as a branch. So this guy with six carbons in a row, it would be a hexane, right? Six carbons in a row would be hexane. But then we threw a one carbon substituent, which is called a methyl. Methyl is CH3 group off to the side. And this methyl group is attached to the second carbon. So 2-methylhexane would be one isomer of heptane. And if you want to see this more clearly, draw out the Lewis structure where you draw each carbon in, all seven carbons, and then obey the octet rule to fill in the hydrogens. And you'll see it's also C7H16. We can also have a hexane 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, where we put the carbon in a different place. Second to the end would be either this carbon or this carbon. So if we put it either here or here, we'd have a 2-methyl hexane. So we'll put it somewhere else, put it off the third carbon from the end, and then we get 3-methyl hexane as an isomer. And all the carbons here are either going to be the end one, where putting a carbon on that just extends the chain, the second carbon from the end, so if we add a carbon to that, we'll get 2-methylhexane, or the third carbon from the end, which will give us 3-methylhexane. So these are the only two hexane-based isomers of heptane. So again, I'm going to shorten the chain down to five carbons. 
and that would be a pentane. So now with the longest chain being five carbons in a row, the root pent for five carbons in a row, and ane for saturated hydrocarbon, now I have two different methyl groups that I can put somewhere on this chain to make the new isomer. So I'm going to start by putting both methyls on the same carbon second from the end. Again, if I put them on the end, I just extend the chain, make it longer, and we've already addressed the ones with the longer chains. So I have to put it a little farther in. So this one is two methyls. We just added two single carbon substituents, dimethyl, and I put them both on the second carbon. So this is 2,2-dimethylpentane for two methyl groups, both on the second carbon of a pentane, and if you draw the Lewis structure, you'll verify that we have C7H16. This molecule is different than the other ones we've already drawn. Then we can take another pentane and put both methyls on the third carbon, which is the center carbon of the molecule. Then we have 3,3-dimethylpentane, which is another isomer. So again, putting both substituents on a single carbon, we can do the 2,2-dimethylpentane, 3,3-dimethylpentane. Remember in a pentane, the fourth carbon is the same as the second. So if we tried to add two methyls here, we'd just be doing 2,2-dimethylpentane drawn backwards again. So that's not a new isomer. Um, so we go ahead and do a five carbon longest chain, one, two, three, four, five in a row. That's a pentane. And now we're going to put one of the carbons on the second carbon and then the other one somewhere else. So rather than putting both carbon substituents on the same carbon, we can mix it up and put them somewhere else. So this one, one, two, three, four, five carbons, we now have two methyls. So we say dimethyl for that. The Greek prefix says how many methyls. And then one of them's on the second carbon and one's on the third carbon. So 2,3-dimethylpentane is a different isomer, a different molecule, than either 2,2-dimethylpentane or 3,3-dimethylpentane. We can then put five carbons in a row, put one on the second carbon and one on the fourth carbon. And this gives us a different molecule that's different than anything we've drawn yet. Again, two methyls, dimethyl, attached to a five carbon longest chain, pentane, and one of them's on the second carbon and one's on the fourth. So 2,4-dimethylpentane, and it doesn't matter which way you number this. You're going to get the same name, the same basic molecule, one, two, three, four, five in a row, the second and the fourth, different places to put the methyls to get a new compound. So 2,4-dimethylpentane is one of the isomers. And then here's something that, this is the one I'm most likely to forget myself, is rather than putting two methyl groups on there, we can put a two-carbon substituent somewhere in the chain. Now to avoid extending the chain and making it longer, we can't put a two-carbon chain on the first carbon because then we just make a heptane, right? But if we go all the way into the third carbon and we put a two-carbon substituent, we don't make any longer chain than five in a row. So here we have one, two, three, four, five carbons in a row. And off the third carbon, there's a two-carbon branch. So the two-carbon branch is called an ethyl F meaning two carbon, and the YL ending meaning it's attached to some other group. So two carbons attached to each other, attached to some other group. So an ethyl pentane. And then the place we've put it is off the third carbon, three ethyl pentane. So that's another isomer. 
And now I've exhausted all the ways I could put either two single carbon substituents or one two carbon substituent on a pentane. So I have to shorten the chain again to a butane. So four carbons in a row is a butane. And now I need to throw three carbons into branch positions here. Again, I can't put them on the end without extending the chain. So I'm going to put two carbons on the second carbon. I can't put three there because then I violate the octet rule. And I put a third one on the third carbon. So this one, I have three one carbon substituents. So that's trimethyl, trimethylbutane. And now where I've placed them, if you number the butane chain, is I have two of the methyls on the second carbon and one of the methyls on the third carbon. So I have two, two, three trimethylbutane. So I put what position each of the three methyls are in this chain. So there's the nine isomers of heptane. The parent heptane is the first one. And then we have two methylhexane, 3-methylhexane, 2-2-dimethylpentane, 3-3-dimethylpentane, 2-3-dimethylpentane, 2-4-dimethylpentane. The sneaky one I forget all the time is the 3-ethylpentane, and then 2-2-3-trimethylbutane. And I mentioned that there are certain things you might think seem reasonable, like putting an ethyl group on a pentane you might look and say, well, let's put an ethyl on the second carbon, right? So you have one, two, three, four, five carbons in a row makes it a pentane. And then if we throw a two carbon substituent off the second carbon, we call this a two ethyl pentane. And this looks like a reasonable isomer of C7H16. If you draw the structure, it works out. The problem we have here is when we put a two carbon group on the second carbon, we've just made a longer chain. So we're thinking of this five carbon chain as our longest one, but when we put two carbons on the second carbon, look what we've done. If we start counting from the end of the ethyl group, one, two, three, four, five, six. So now our longest chain is not what we intended, it's this. So this is a one, two, three, four, five, six carbons connected to each other is the longest chain. So this is not a pentane. It's a hexane. One, two, three, four, five, six carbons in a row with a methyl hanging off the third carbon. So this is three methyl hexane, which we already accounted for when we were systematically doing it. Again, we drew it differently. So our three methyl hexane looked like this because we had one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in a row with this hanging off the side. So three methyl hexane is here. This one is drawn sort of funny, but it's still a three methyl hexane. So when you learn how to name the organic compounds, then you'll also learn how to identify whether things are the same or different. Because if they have the same name, they're the same. If they have different names, they're different. So these are the nine unique constitutional isomers of heptane. And you should be able to, at any time, write out structural, uh, skeletal structures and names and the formula for the nine isomers of heptane much like we learned how to do for the five constitutional isomers of hexane. This is where things are interesting enough to make it worthwhile to work through, but not overwhelming. So good questions for tests or quizzes. The five isomers of heptanes, nine isomers, five isomers of hexanes, nice nine isomers of heptanes. Never rush, it causes you to make mistakes.